Back in the Caribbean, every eye in the world was turned on us. A private army, just a bunch of guys with guns, in possession of a nuke? Why wouldn't they be uncomfortable? And that's why you made sure the inspection happened. Well, I thought our best move was to prove to the UN, through the IAEA, that we had no nuke. Of course, I was against us having it in the first place, but that... Well, don't get me wrong, I, I still believed in Snake. I thought I was making the best decision for all of us, that's all. I figured we should get a third party to exonerate us before proof of the nuke did get out. And who better to do that than an organization with international authority? <sighs> so the truth is, you took it upon yourself to agree to an inspection arranged by the UN. Only the inspection was a ruse, and Cypher Strike Force XOF showed up instead. I had no idea that would happen. Enough bullshit! Oh, sure, like I could have known. You know, I was just trying to prove our innocence to the world. What's wrong with that? We're not interested in the excuses you've thought up. The truth is objective. Just see it from my point of view. You led XOF to the control tower. They seized it, giving them complete control over the base. Moments later, they detonated C4 on the strut legs. Anyone who'd managed to survive was hunted down by the assault force and their choppers. You can't believe I did that on purpose. That was the end of Mother Base. But it wasn't the end for you. How can you... Look, think about it. I lost something too. I built Zeke and it got buried underwater. I am a victim. That raises the big questions. Why were you the only one spared? You got away without a scratch. Why did Strangelove leave the base on the eve of the inspection? You two were close. Strangelove? <laughs> and how did you manage to build something that surpasses Zeke in every way? Because you did everything they told you. <laughs> You're the only one who didn't lose a thing. That is the truth. Th I was taken away against my will. Skullface forced me to do his research these past nine years. He used me. I lost nine years. Nine years? We all lost nine years. It wasn't just you. I suppose blaming me makes you feel better, does it? But who's gonna give me back all the time I lost? You're not getting anything back. <sighs> You're not a victim here, Emmerich. You're the perpetrator. I didn't know anything. Nobody can back that up. Yeah, all the evidence is at the bottom of the ocean. You know the hardest man to break. The type who's fooling himself. That takes time. It's easier to live a convenient lie than a painful truth. Is that the piece you've chosen, Doc? I'm not lying. Of course. Just let me check one or two things. On that day, you were in the control tower with them. Lucky you. That's how you got out unscathed. And you escaped on one of their choppers. Only you, right before the base went under. They had me blindfolded the whole time. I've never been so scared. The whole flight, I thought they'd kill me. But, but think... And? There was a plane journey, and then we traveled by road. When they finally took off the blindfold, I was in kind of a warehouse, on the floor. Afghanistan, it was that research lab. I couldn't believe they'd taken me halfway around the world. And soon enough, he came. Skullface. He's the one who's really behind that mother base attack. He forced me into that research. What kind of research? He told me to build a bipedal walking tank for the Soviet Union. Like Peace Walker. A system that could fire an ICBM-class nuclear weapon. That's how the Sahelanthropus project got started. Sahelanthropus. Those AI weapons I'd made in Costa Rica were like toys by comparison. A whole world apart from reptilian four-legged crawling and, and that ridiculous hunched-over bipedal waddling. My design evolved to the dawn of mankind. Sahelanthropus, the first steps towards humanity. An upright bipedal weapon system.
Originally, Sahelanthropus was going to be a manned weapons platform. I designed a cockpit in its head, and I planned to fill it with water as a buffering agent. Like how Pus modified Zeke for human control. Don't compare me to some amateur. I designed it for human control from the beginning. The problem was miniaturizing the posture control AI. You remember the reptile pod? The AI that controlled your unmanned weapons. Attaching it externally makes it vulnerable, so this time I wanted it beneath the armor. Meaning I had to make the AI smaller. I got it down to less than a tenth the size without any loss in computation speed. But it was still too big for the cockpit. There wasn't enough room for the pilot. If I made the head bigger, its body would have to be bigger to support it, too big to be practical. In the end, human piloting was taken off the table. I tested a remote control system too, but there was the time lag and I wasn't satisfied with its precision either. Plus, it would be useless if the enemy jammed it. So next, I went back to trying an AI-only system. To do that, I had the AI pods recovered from Nicaragua. <sighs> This was a hybrid AI, a combination of Peace Walker's reptile and mammal pods. The only AIs that had ever successfully operated an unmanned nuclear weapon system. Really? You'd need some help to get that working. Expert help. Did you work with someone? I worked alone. You did that yourself? <laughs> That's the thing. The AI didn't pan out in the end either. But I did finally get Sahelanthropus walking by folding over its upper body to lower its center of gravity. The first upright bipedal locomotive weapon system in the history of mankind. I guess technically it falls into the anthropoid ape category. I don't see the benefit of having it stand taller. On terrain with significant differences in elevation like Afghanistan, you need a body that's vertically adaptable. That also lets it attack from long range while using mountain ridges for cover. So, making it walk upright was the most important factor in giving it superior height capability. As the name suggests, that was the whole point of Sahelanthropus. But I was being pushed for results. Having the AI mounted externally would have been the fastest way to get it working. I just needed more data so it could maintain its balance. But Skullface refused to wait. He dismissed the idea of AI control and took Sahelanthropus away from me before I could finish it. But it was walking when it came after you. That's just it. I don't understand how Skullface got it to move upright. Without a pilot or an AI. And walking at that speed, too. It's beyond anything I could have imagined. This is like the Wright brothers making it to the moon. Uh, I'm just as clueless as you are. So this Soholanthropus, where is it now? I have no idea. All my experiments took place at that cave. I've never seen it anywhere else. Besides, it's still just an incomplete prototype at this point and nothing but a paper tiger. Even if it can walk, it's far from being a viable weapons platform. It wouldn't be useful in actual battle. Emmerich will remain here at Mother Base for now, but not as a member of Diamond Dogs. I still don't trust him. That work for you? Fine by me. He can't be allowed any contact with staff either. Yeah. A lot of the guys would love some payback for nine years ago. We still need him alive. But we have to restrict his movements. He can only go where we tell him. And of course, the interrogations will continue. He worked for that Skull Bastard for nearly a decade. He still has more to tell us. How long are we gonna press him? If our investigation shows he really had nothing to do with the attack, we'll reconsider his place here. But I don't expect that to happen. Remember that water tank-shaped object in Emmerich's lab in the Soviet base camp? The thing that started talking to you like a possessed answering machine? That was a pod belt for housing the AI used to control unmanned weapons. You remember, back in 74 in Costa Rica. It was in those machines you fought there. They were designated Pupa, Chrysalis, Cocoon, and Basilisk. And each of them was fitted with an AI unit called a Reptile Pod. Emmerich created it. It mainly handled the machine's posture control and autonomous behavior. But the Basilisk, aka Peace Walker, also featured a second AI pod. 
That one was called the Mammal Pod, and it was created by Dr. Strangelove. She tried to recreate the boss's personality through the Mammal Pod, but you pulled out its memory boards. That's when it transferred its own functions to its reptile pod. Just like a human brain compensating for damage by using the remaining healthy parts, the result was a unique entity, a hybrid of the reptile and the mammal. It sank to the bottom of Lake Nicaragua with Peace Walker, but apparently they salvaged it and transported it to that lab. Don't let it deceive you, Snake. It may sound like the boss, but it has neither a personality You call that thing Sahalanthropus. Where does the name come from? Well, several years ago, an excavation team discovered a hominid skull in the Sahel region. Central Africa. The Southern Sahara. Cypher gave the specimen the name Sahalanthropus. Man of Sahel. And then they covered the whole thing up. Why? They probably wanted to monopolize information about human evolution to have a head start in their genetic research. At least, until they had an idea of what they'd found. It was that big of a discovery, huh? Sahalanthropus was a gracile hominid, estimated to have lived about seven million years ago. What's significant about it is how its skull's foramen magnum faces down. In other words, its spinal column supported its head from underneath. Please it stood upright. Right. Which would mean Sahelanthropus walked upright three million years before Australopithecus, making it the world's oldest human species. Walking upright. I get it. Hence the name Sahelanthropus for your machine. Walking upright was the decisive difference between our ancestors and other anthropoids. Our brains could get heavier once they were supported by the spinal column. That led to the use of tools and the development of complex communication through language. Only man is capable of this. My creation will be the progenitor of all bipedal weapon platforms. And you did this for Cypher? No, not at all. Sahelanthropus is the best proof that I never betrayed you guys. What do you mean? The reconstructed Sahelanthropus skull looked exactly like the skull we used as our logo nine years ago in the Caribbean. An army without a nation. Outside the world order. The design was based on Pangaea, the supercontinent that existed 250 million years ago, right? Yeah. When the world was a single landmass, that concept's at the source of our strength. I felt the same way about Sahelanthropus. Sure, I was forced to build it under their orders, but I always wanted to put its technology back in our hands someday. That's the reason I incorporated the old insignia into Sahelanthropus's name. Don't you see? That's how much I was thinking about you guys. Oh, I see, all right. I see someone desperate to cover his ass. You can say whatever you want after the fact, but that skull also symbolizes somebody else. Skull face. Snake, you finally came. Just don't record this, okay? I'm not recording anything. What's this about? What I'm about to say stays between you and me. It's about the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. <sighs> you know a researcher by the name of Clark? He works in the biotech industry. Real advanced stuff. His area is bioengineering, but lately, he's also gotten into genetic research. Never heard of him. Well then, what do you know about cloning? I think I've heard enough. Hold on, this is important. Cloning lets you create a genetic copy of an organism. You take the nucleus of one of its cells, and you swap it with the nucleus of an unfertilized egg from another member of the same species. They started out working with plants, but since then, they've had success with other organisms, including mammals. It's a hot area for a lot of places right now. Corporations, universities, research groups. There's no shortage of scientists out to get famous and patent their work, with morality taking a back seat. Isn't that a little outside your field? It's got nothing to do with my research. 
but I thought it might be of interest to you. Cloning and Dr. Clark, I mean. Go on. Now, this is really highly classified stuff. But I've heard that an American biotech company has successfully cloned a human being. What's more, it happened over 10 years ago. And the researcher behind it was Dr. Clark. You've really never heard of him? I don't meet many doctors. This Dr. Clark is a complete ghost, even to others in his field. His age, where he comes from, that might not be his real name. And I can't even say for sure he's a he. Clark's employer, ATGC, its company motto is embracing your hopes, preserving talent. What is this? Dr. Clark works for ATGC, and they have connections to DARPA. Cypher couldn't function without the communications network DARPA's built. Meaning, Cypher has to be a part of the Pentagon. Or at least, the two are joined at the hip. DARPA is a driving force behind human cloning. It's a pretty high priority project for them. And this Dr. Clark? Some say he's a pivotal player in Cypher. But that's not all. Every cell nucleus in an organism contains the genetic information for that organism. Think of it as a blueprint for life. Clark appears to be working on how to decode this information and rearrange it at will. If you could do that, it would mean being able to custom design human beings for specific purposes. Can you believe that? Suppose for a moment that this is all fact. A man of your talents, if your genetic information died with you, that would be a terrible loss for mankind. But what if mankind could preserve you for future generations by cloning you? All right, enough. I get the idea. Look, I know it's inductive reasoning, but this weapon to surpass Metal Gear they're developing in Africa, I believe it's something that uses this new technology. <sighs> Speaking as a fellow scientist, it chills me to the bone. That's rich coming from you. If genes serve as our blueprint, then I wonder if they include an impulse that drives us to tweak the design. Can you imagine that? Genes, encoded with information that wants its children to decode it. Is life itself putting the direction of our next evolution in the hands of scientists? I guess it would take some real arrogance to believe that. And yet, it could be what Cypher's after. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. But that was an interesting story. It'd make a good movie. You have to believe me. Where'd you hear all this anyway? Where? I just overheard it in bits and pieces while I was forced to do that research for them. Right. W wait a minute. Look. I want to help you. I want to be of service here. I'm risking my life with this. Is that so? Maybe it's time we brought someone else into the conversation. No, not him. Not Ocelot. You can't do this. Fine. Yes, Strangelove was doing AI research in that lab. Why hide that until now? Why? Okay. So what? I wasn't working alone. You've got to understand. You do understand, right? I didn't want to drag her into this. It's my load to bear, alone. So you didn't create the AI intended to drive Sahelanthropus. It was strange, love. Skullface was never in favor of AI control. So naturally, they argued. Strange love, she... She got him angry, and... and... He killed her. How? You didn't see it? So you found her inside that pot after the fact. And you just left her body to rot in there. Or perhaps you put her in there afterward. I... I... I asked him not to take her away from me. So she was killed by Skullface, but you asked nicely, and he put her body in the AI pod for you. That's right. Pathetic. You know, we have another idea. That you killed her. What, me? I couldn't kill her. You killed her and locked her body in the pod. 
I wouldn't. D don't treat me like one of you. I, I can't just kill anyone whenever I feel like it. I'm a, a, a normal human being. Oh, I see. So you just shut her inside and waited for her to die. I would never do that. What, you mean she killed herself? Yes. She, she climbed inside that pod and shut the door. It, it can't be opened from the outside. It, it was suicide. Huh? Suicide, I said. She killed herself. She got in when I wasn't looking and, and suffocated. She'd often try to do things like that. Uh, by the time I realized and opened the door, she wasn't breathing. I, I got scared and shut the pod again. I couldn't bring myself to open it back up. Caution, That's right. Rain, Me? Kill her? What, what is wrong with you? I see. Just tell me one more thing. Haven't you gotten enough today? Okay, okay, I see it's a painful memory. You don't have to answer, just listen to the question. <sighs> you see, we examined her remains. She had a scar on her lower abdomen, a surgical scar. It had been stitched up and had fully healed, meaning it was long before her death. She had a child, didn't she? Uh, I, I... Your child. Where's the kid? How should I know? So there is a child. I've never seen his face. What do you take us for? They took it all. Even my child. I didn't even know he'd been born. I, I lost everything. How old would he be? It's four years since then. And you know it's a boy. Strange Love said so. And his name? We called him Hal, even though I never saw his face. <laughs> what was your goal in having the children repair Sahelanthropus? I just answered their questions. I had no idea they would actually try to fix it. I mean, can you imagine a child piloting it? Oh, sure. Easily. It wouldn't work. Well, I bet it's just like riding a bike. I said it didn't work. It... Uh, Who did you try? I, I didn't. Did you put your son in it? Uh, we never did that. His name was, uh, Hal, wasn't it? I, I thought you said you never saw his face. But you made him pilot Sahelanthropus. You used him in your experiments. He wanted to get in. <sighs> it was such a short time we had. So he was with you. We were happy. You're still happy now. Changing your lies to suit the listener and getting by slipping through the cracks. Building layer upon layer of convenient stories until nothing means anything to you anymore. You're happy all the time, because you don't even notice you're doing it. Think hard. Who are you, really? You're not a victim, and you're not the silent majority. You're a perpetrator and a petty hypocrite. The real world doesn't make you suffer. It's the other way around. Well, Doctor, I have the report on the incident at the quarantine facility. Assuming the vocal cord parasite evolved, I'm sorry, underwent a mutation. The only plausible explanations are exposure to some high concentration mutagen or radiation. As you know, some of the staff at the quarantine facility were infected with the parasites. The Wolbachia prevented them from copulating, but the parasites themselves can't be removed from their host's vocal cords. Once you're infected with... Skullface's parting gift. You're stuck with it. The researchers regularly used X-ray equipment to monitor the parasites in their throats. No problem there, they kept a close eye on the radiation doses. But that equipment didn't just give off X-rays. It was also emitting beta rays. Even though that's unnecessary for the scans. See, beta rays have far worse effects on DNA than X-rays. 
meaning the only logical conclusion is that someone added in a beta ray emitter to trigger a mutation. Those beta rays leaked out from inside the equipment. Because the emitter was retrofitted, the shielding was inadequate. And the person who ordered and inspected the equipment was you, Doctor. That makes you the only person with the opportunity to install that emitter. So now you're saying I sabotage medical equipment for some wild plan to make the vocal cord parasite kill everyone? Or maybe you thought it'd reveal a way to treat the parasite without using the Wolbachia. With that much to barter, I suppose some people would welcome even a pathetic cur like you. Just stop it! You'd have no shortage of buyers. But most would be happy with just the parasite. You wouldn't need to offer anything else. However, if that buyer already knew about the parasite, they'd also know that by itself, it's no longer the ultimate bargaining chip it once was. To sell to that buyer, you need to throw in a bonus. A way to one-up it. There's only one buyer who'd be after that. <laughs> Emmerich. We record all communications on Mother Base. That includes radio transmissions to and from homemade devices. You've been in frequent contact with people in America. A private biotech company. A client of which is DARPA. And they are connected to Cypher. You made a deal with Cypher. You offered them a new parasite in exchange for your safety. This is the only place in the world where the vocal cord parasite still exists. And you used it as a testing ground. Tried to resurrect their bioweapon. But your plan to obtain the parasite has failed. Your bullshit ends now. And don't think you're leaving here alive. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? Just what do you plan to do? Present the charges against you. And render an appropriate punishment. You're gonna put me on trial? <laughs> Call it what you like. the meaning of this? Out of here. All of you. Back to your posts. No, hang on. Huey has killed their comrades and interfered with their lives. They've had all they can take. Kill that son of a bitch! Kill her! Kill her! Stop! This is insane! You have no evidence whatsoever! You say you're an army free from government. You talk big about being a nation unto yourselves. But, but from the outside, you're just thugs, rebels. A militia, you terrorists, an unhinged threat to society. You're nothing but a, a bunch of psychopaths. You're. So you're not with us. N no, I, I didn't. I thought we were on the same side. That's too bad. I, I didn't mean. <laughs> Men, you will have justice. But our organization, the boss's organization, is built on order and reason. There will be no lynch mob. So stand down for today. We will gather all the evidence of this man's crimes. And then, he will be tried. Dismissed! What do you think you're doing? Go ahead and execute me. It'll be murder in the eyes of the world. You've lost your minds! Don't you get it? You're seeing phantoms! Just look at that dog! No. You named him D-Dog, but it's obvious anyone could see that's a wolf, because you're all a bunch of wild dogs. You wanted to believe he was, too, to feel some connection, to fight your loneliness. You wanted something to cling to, to prove you deserve to be alive. You wanted to forget the death, your sins, so you'd cling on to dogs, or, or wolves, or... Even Big Boss. The boss is the same, isn't he? Every one of you is alone. That's why you suspect your own. I know. Because I do the same. I'm one of you, too. Alone. Open your eyes! What you're doing is murder! Plain and simple! All you ever create is war! 
War and violence can never lead to peace! The R&D team's going to take over Emmerich's work. He may be gone, but it won't affect us one bit. We'll be able to deliver whatever you need just like before. You can depend on that. One other thing. I'm tracking his whereabouts. Nothing to report at the moment, though. Let it go. He's gone. The guy's gone. I know. I just want to be sure. Not like I'm losing sleep over this son of a bitch. Open this thing! Huey! Damn it, Huey! Open it now! Please! Let me out! Fool me! If only I'd tried to get out sooner. Perhaps I'd have made it. Why didn't I stop the hatch from closing? Even if it meant losing an arm. Distant. But you can hear me, can't you, Joy? I know you can. You're a chord in all of this. Deep down in some memory board he'll never find. Duplicating it. Burying it under heat. Meaningless code. <laughs> anyway, I guess I can say what needs to be said. I can still do that much. Talk to you. Even if I can't face you. Even if there's a heaven. Even if you're waiting there. I don't deserve to see you again. I don't deserve to love you. I signed up for Zero's plan. Even now that he's halfway to dead, his plan lives on, leeching away at the wall. And it took your strength to make it happen. In using you, I put the world in his palm. Once and for all. Zero. Zero. Or whoever it is who's taken its name. They found me. After the Caribbean. They made me. Simulate his will. So that even after the body was gone, that will would keep the world turning the way they were. I had no choice. They dredged Lago Corsi Bolka, pulled up your phantom, forced me to revive and modify you. I 
thought I could bring you back. But in the end, I sold your will to him. Now this part is just one big shell. A husk. <laughs> your phantom's no longer here. As for me, everything I touch turns to ashes. I could never make anyone happy. <laughs> And now, I'll never see my son again. But, at least Hal's free from his father's hands. Me. With child. Can you imagine? I wonder how you took the news. Were you jealous? I knew what I was doing. If I could pass your will onto a child I carried, my genes, your beam, a father would be. Irrelevant. If I did that, that child would be ours. <laughs> Pride, conceit, baseless theories. Of course, I couldn't see through the dream. The false you I created. I only wanted to pass your will on to the next generation. But Zero took it away. And now I haven't just lost you. I've lost my Hal, can you forgive the mother who couldn't protect you? The one who let them take it all away from us. Oh. Oh. There's still hope. You... The one he took away. He'll never break your will. The will to make this world the way you saw it could be. I buried code, just to be sure. Inside of you, there is an egg. And when someone finds it, when they crack it, there'll be nothing left to stop you. The world you envisioned will become a reality. Julie. Do you remember my voice? Don't you? Please? Take care of our son. Hell. Don't ever be afraid. Whatever happens with her. She'll be watching over you. The system, the framework for the world, 
will protect you. You don't need me. You just need to be strong enough for the both of us. 